Hey there, Mr. Reddit here. Welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled Parent Stories. Today we have a very special episode for you, a compilation of some of the greatest Entitled Parent Stories we read over the past year. So sit back, relax, and enjoy a few hours of the most Entitled Parents you've ever heard of. And by the way, Karen assured me that if this video gets 1000 likes, she won't try to speak to anyone's manager for an entire week. So please smash that like button. And if you're new, subscribe and turn on notifications for new stories from Reddit every single day. And become an official member of the ReArmy today, and I'll give you a shout out in an upcoming video. R slash Entitled Parents. Let my son play your bass guitar. He knows Guitar Hero. English is my first language. Feel free to roast me. Insert obligatory mobile warning here. If you are lazy, too long didn't read at the bottom. A little bit of backstory here. My aunts from my maternal side are nice people, but oh boy, are my paternal aunts entitled. I'm an electric bass player, so it's not easy to play like any fretted string instrument. Our cast. We've got me. Who do you expect? We've got entitled aunt. Entitled kid. So... It's a normal afternoon, with me jamming on my electric bass, playing along to tunes from Stone Temple's Pilots, Radiohead, Black Sabbath, and Muse, when Entitled Aunt and Entitled Kid decide to visit, unannounced. They come in demanding that they wanted to visit, despite my family's schedule being rather busy that day. My parents try to make them feel comfortable, but they end up complaining about how the couch is too soft, and how incredibly lukewarm the boiling hot tea was. Incoming Entitled Kid Alert Entitled Kid, decidedly bored sitting on the couch, decides to enter my room, with the ensuing conversation going like this. Ooh, a guitar. It's an electric bass, but you could say it's a guitar. Can I play it? I'm sorry, but this bass I have is precious to me, and I'm afraid you'll damage it. Entitled Kid cuts me off. Let me play it. Let me play it. No, no, no. I'm sorry, but no means no. Hmm. <laughs> I'll tell mommy. Entitled Kid storms off. I thought this was all over and that Entitled Aunt would teach Entitled Kid about how no means no. But I was wrong. Very wrong. Entitled Aunt Alert. Beep, beep, beep. Less than five minutes after asking Entitled Kid to leave, I hear a knock on my door. A strong, full-bodied knock, like a SWAT team punching the door. I open the door. Who is it? How dare you not let my son play your guitar? You probably didn't let him because you're too afraid of his prowess. Me, being the calm person I am. Entitled Ant, let me ask you a question. What qualifications does your son have that shows that he has the same skill level or better at electric bass than me? I am a grade 5 electric bassist. Pah! Why ask that question? He's been playing that Guitar Hero thing for months, and he's surely better than you. Insert standard issue Mr. Reddit re here. <sighs> I turn around and barely restrain myself from laughing like a hippo. So, to teach them a lesson, I did this. Fine, that's good enough. I'll let him play. But first, let me do some things to make it sound better. I begin to plug in a lot of effects pedals and set the bass amplifier's volume to maximum to make sure they would not touch my instruments again. Hmm, if I was your parents, I would spank you until midnight. You kids are so entitled these days. I see Entitled Aunt inviting Entitled Kid to enter my room. Less than five minutes later, the loudest, dirtiest, and most obnoxious sound ever comes from my room. It was like taking a plate, throwing it on the floor, and using a shard to scratch a chalkboard. Just louder, deeper, and more painful. The last time I saw Entitled Kid before he left, less than half an hour after the event, he was nursing his head as if he had suffered a most terrible of migraines. From that day onward, when Entitled Aunt and Entitled Kid came to visit, 
they never ventured into my room again. Oh, and Mr. Reddit, I've been a long-time viewer of your videos, and I decided to contribute one story of my own. I give you full permission to use this story and all its unedited goodness. Now that, my friend, is how you deal with an entitled mom and an entitled kid. Next up, we've got... Why should I care about his missing leg? My kid thinks that cane is cool. So, here's some backstory. My cousin was in the British military and lost his left leg below the knee in Helmand. And considering he lives in the highlands of Scotland and is still physically fit, he makes a living on taking tour groups up mountains and locks in the area. He needs a cane or he'll fall over. I live in the most city place in Glasgow, so often go up to visit him whenever I'm free for a wee hike or a camping trip. Anyway, one day he asks me if I fancy helping him out with a tour group, and I didn't mind, so I went along with him. So we're hiking up towards the ferry pools. Most tourists don't realize how far up the ferry pools are and get tired on the first time, 10 kilometers from where we start. We're at the beginning of the trail and cousin gives the briefing, how far it is, when they'll take breaks, if they even want a break at all, and where they can start swimming. So eventually, a wee kid tells their mom that he's tired and this is the full conversation. Mom, I'm tired. Can we take a break? Of course, taps cousin's shoulder. My son says he's tired. Can we take a break? Well... If you'd listened to the briefing, uh, you'd know when and where. She didn't. What? This is an American tour group. Speak English. She was the only one not from Scotland. Cousin and a slightly less thick accent. Had you listened like the rest, you'd know when we'd take breaks. Entitled mom looks upset, but scoffs it off and moves back to her part in the line. About one to two kilometers later where we have an optional first break. My cousin says, All right, if anyone needs a break, you can take it now. Finally! During the break, she was already a bit of a jerk and clearly didn't pack for the trip as she only had a half-empty bottle of water on her. So she went around the rest of the hikers asking for their food because her kid was hungry. Eventually, my cousin just gives her his food because he didn't want the other hikers to get irritated. I don't like tuna. You don't have anything else? No. Now my cousin is angry. Entitled mom tells her kid to eat the sandwich anyway, which he does somewhat reluctantly. Before we resumed our hike, Entitled kid asked his mom for cousin's cane, which may I remind you, he needs due to his somewhat still new fake leg. Mom, I'm tired. Can I get a walking stick thing too? I'm sure you can. Entitled mom looks at my cousin, assuming he heard and cared about what they were talking about. Can I help you with anything else? My son would like a walking stick too. Sorry, don't have a spare. Well, can he have yours? No, I need mine. But he's tired. How bad would it be if he just borrowed it? I need this, or I'll fall over. Look, my kid's already tired and hungry. Just give him your walking stick. You're being dramatic. Please, I'm tired, and it looks cool. Entitled Mom gives one of those, you heard him, looks. In the meanwhile, the rest of the group was kind of upset, because this was the second time they had to stop because of Entitled Mom, saying stuff like, oh, come on. However, she misinterpreted this as the group backing her up somehow. See, even they think he should have it. I need this or I'll fall. Fall? How many times have you gone up here? Shouldn't you be familiar with the path? Shouldn't you be fit enough to? At this point, I, now also upset, cut her off. Right. Now listen here, you walking one-star review. My cousin lost his left leg in Afghan and needs the bloody cane. It's not our fault you didn't research how long this path was. How dare you speak to me like that? And besides, what leg? 
He has both here, does he not? Cousin rolls up his trouser leg, exposing his fake leg. Ma'am, I do not mind you staying on the tour, but I won't stop for any of your complaints anymore. You're holding up the rest. Entitled Mom just quietly moves to the rear of the line. Got a bit of a row for being rude to her from my cousin, but felt pretty satisfied when she eventually just took the path back after getting tired. Seeing the fairy pools is summit else. Next we've got... Entitled Mom tries to steal my dog because I don't deserve it. Disclaimer, I'm on PC, so I have no excuse for spelling errors. Make fun of me all you want. Oh, and this happened last month. Sorry if this is long, this got me mad, and I have a photographic memory, so I remember this like it happened an hour ago. Does have dialogue. Okay, okay, enjoy. Our cast, we've got me. I have no clue how he keeps following me home. We've got Entitled Mom, Entitled Kid, Dog Owner 1, Dog Owner 2. For context, Chance is the dog, he will be known as Chance, and I look a lot like a girl, even in my face. I'm a voice actor and learned a, ahem, anime girl voice and start talking in it when I get nervous and I'm too socially awkward to correct people who call me a girl. And the ahem is for the other anime, if you get it, you get it. My voice starts to get moany the higher and more anime it gets. Important later on. Backstory. I have a dog walking business and it's great. I walk a dog named Chance three days a week for half an hour. I tried for about 30 minutes to post a pic of him, but I can't figure out how to. I'm on PC, Windows. Anyways, he's a great dog and the owners are great too. The next part is not needed if you're in a rush but we'll make the story better. I've walked Chance for about four to five weeks now, and he's a great dog. The owners have me wash him for five extra a week, so I'm making $20 a week. Important later on. I always walk down to the dog park, about two miles away, though it's not a bad run, and if Chance is feeling up to it, we can get there in eight minutes. My route is 10 minutes to get there and wait for about 10 to 15 minutes and leave. This happened on the day we made it in 7 minutes. It was a record for us. Every Wednesday there's a farmer's market where we go to eat and it's all fresh and I personally love the ahi pokey, tuna. Anyways, there's always over 50 people there and it gets a little hectic sometimes. I've met a lot of people like this one, so if you want me to, I can tell more. There is a lagoon right next to the farmer's market and a community center, so it's popular already. Story this was a Wednesday, and as usual, the owners were at the farmer's market, so I got a chance and headed down. They unlock their back door for me to get in, and they leave their harness and body strap out for me to grab. There was a note saying, Take this 20, so if we're not back, you are paid. So I get the stuff set up, grab a bag, and head out. I'm getting to the lagoon, and this lady walks up to me, and the following happens. Entitled Mom seemed nice at first, so Mr. Reddit, if you do read this, give her a good voice until I say, please, the kid is a snob though. Mommy, mommy, I want to pet the doggy. He starts walking towards my big dog, about half the size of me, and pets him without asking. Excuse me, young girl. Um, hello? That's a very pretty dog you have there. Thanks, he's a golden shepherd. Now her voice starts to kick in, but on top of entitled, she sounds like she's smoked a pack of cigs. My boy really likes that dog. How much do you want for him? Um, he's not for sale, and if he was, I wouldn't sell him to you. <clears throat> What's that supposed to mean? Ma'am, you sound like you smoke daily, and I wouldn't want chance around that. Mommy, I want the puppy. Please. I know, entitled kid. Mommy will get him for you. You. She looks at me. Give me your dog or else. I'm starting to get very anxious and starting to talk in the anime voice. Ma'am, please leave me alone. Why am I bugging you? And why is your voice getting higher? Please, ma'am, leave me alone. I just want to walk chance. Mommy, she's leaving. 
I want the doggy. Yes, he was this annoying in real life. Give me the dog right now. She said almost evil. Swear she gave me the chills. I start to take off running with Chance, thinking it's a game and following along. He tries to outrun me, so he's going like seven minute miles and I'm barely staying with him. I look behind me and there's Entitled Mom chasing me at full speed. Keep in mind, she's a full grown adult, I'm only 14. So she's right behind me screaming at me to give her my dog. Listen here, you little jerk. You give me that dog right now. Or I will hunt you down and take him from you. My voice is as high anime as it can get, and I'm so nervous I'm shaking. Leave me alone, I said rather moany. I get to the food court, and the owner sees me running with this lady chasing me and stop her immediately. What the heck do you think you're doing, lady? Yeah, he's our dog. And stop harassing our dog walker. That dog walker is a jerk who can't stop moaning. His voice is naturally high and he has anxiety, so stop bugging him. He screamed the last two words. How dare you allow that girl to become that? That is so sinful. No boy has a voice or a face like that. I heard her moan. Please leave me alone. You're not worth my time, you disgusting person. And she left. At least it was over. But that's not it. Apparently, she was getting evicted for neglecting her kid and having holes in her walls. I only learned this because I was part of her getting evicted. I was the last straw. As you may have noticed earlier, I didn't have any more entitled kid lines after she ran at me. Yeah, that's because she pushed him out of the way to get to me and ended up breaking his wrist. She left Entitled Kid alone and ran after me. The lady started arguing more and more until she gave up and left. She never hit me, so no police were called, and it was just a very weird experience. If you think this is fake, it's not. This is very real. And my dog almost got kidnapped. If any of you can tell me how to post a pic on here, I can post a pic of him. Hope that boy's okay. Mr. Reddit, if you do read this story... Please leave a comment or DM me and tell me when you're going to post the vid. I love watching you and hope you will read my story. You have my permission to read my story on your YouTube channel. And our final story of the day. Entitled Mom wants us to reopen 45 minutes after we close. Hey Mr. Reddit, this happened about a month ago, but the Entitled Mom came back in today and it reminded me. I work in a non-chain grillin' bar. The place is not huge, but we do good business and are pretty popular with the locals. This happened on a Saturday night after closing about a month ago. The cast. We've got me. We've got the manager on duty. We have Entitled Mom and Sadie, the awesome waitress. So, it's a Saturday night and I'm working in the kitchen with a few co-workers. Things had been relatively slow all day. Things really die down come summer. And so our manager allowed us to start breaking down the kitchen early, so we would have more time for the floors. Saturday closing shift is required to do a full deep clean on the floors in the kitchen, and it's a long job that can take an upwards of two hours. Even with a full crew, we sometimes don't get done until 1 a.m. There are a few regular casuals finishing their drinks and chatting with manager and the bartender as she breaks down for the night. The regulars finish up, wish everyone good night, and head out about 10.30. Following closing policy, the manager locks up behind them. Breakdown is moving quickly, and we might get out a little earlier than normal. Then 10.45 p.m. comes. Enter Karen. I am wiping down the line when I hear someone first shake the front door and then start banging on it. Our place is pretty small, so the noise spooks me and I peek my head around the server entrance to look at the front door. Big mistake. Karen and I look at each other, and she starts to yell how I need to open the door. I tell her to hold on a minute, I'll go get manager. I tell him we have a woman banging on the door, yelling to unlock it, but I don't know what's going on. He goes over and opens the door to talk to her. After all, maybe she accidentally left her phone or something. As soon as he opens the door, she launches into yelling at him. 
Why are the doors locked? You're open until 11 p.m. Don't you want business? I'm sorry, ma'am, but we close at 10 p.m. No, I was here last night and you open until 11. Yes, we are only open till 11 on Friday nights. We actually closed an hour ago. Sorry about the trouble. He starts to close the door. Entitled Mom puts her foot in the way of the door. That's stupid! But whatever. I need to speak to a manager or someone. I'm the manager on duty. How can I help you? Entitled Mom has now fished a crinkled receipt out of her bag, waves it in his face, and shoves it into his hand. I came in earlier today and ordered the cheese sticks and the salmon, and the cheese sticks were cold. Ice cold. It was disgusting, and the salmon was burnt. I could barely finish. As a side note, there is no way the cheese sticks could be ice cold, because we have loud timers and fry stands that run all day. If anything, they would have been overcooked. Did you happen to mention this to your server at all? We like to make sure that all the food that leaves- I tried. She wasn't interested. I told her that the food was disgusting, and she laughed in my face. Manager's obviously doubting this story, as he is looking at the receipt. And a manager was not requested? I would have been happy to address this. I'm sorry that you didn't enjoy the food. If you would like, I can leave a note for our owner for a free meal tomorrow, or a gift card for the cost of your meal. No. Uh, I'm sorry? I said no. I should not have to come back because your crappy waitress and idiot cooks don't know how to do their jobs. I want my food tonight. Now! Ma'am, that isn't going to happen. Our fryers have been off for an hour, and the kitchen is in teardown. Uh, we can have your- Then turn the gosh darn fryers back on and get me my food. This is ridiculous. We can't do that, I'm afraid. The fryers will take at least half an hour to heat up. Also, if this is correct, I see you on the receipt that you actually came in on Friday. I don't care what day I came in. I am not waiting until tomorrow for you to give me a resolution, you jerk. I live in another city, and I leave tomorrow. Any other solution is useless to me. You know what? I am tired of this. Get me the owner. Now! Ah, <sighs> manager sighs. The owner has to be in at 7 and does not want to be bothered. Okay, I will ring him. Please have a seat. Manager proceeds to call the owner and relay the situation, including that the woman waited a full day to come in. She ends up getting on the phone with him, and they hash out some deal that she is apparently fine with that doesn't involve reopening the whole kitchen. She leaves feeling smug and we finish up the night. Turns out, the owner told her that he would personally give her a gift card for the cost of the meal and dessert the next morning. Fast forward to today, and I'm sitting in one of the black booths, as I am now sanitation and getting my stuff together before I head home. We open, and who should walk in but Karen, in her local high school t-shirt. One of the servers I am friendly with has her seated in her section. I had told this server about this whole situation as a war story. I flag her down and tell her how this was that Karen. Are you for real? I look at her. Other city, my butt. She's a regular. She lives down the street from me. All I can do is laugh and shake my head as I leave to go home. Misadventures with my entitled father. Hi there, Mr. Reddit. Just recently got into your videos and joined the Re-Army and have to say, I love all the different voices you give the various Karens and other entitled characters we've run into so far. Anyway, I figured I'd share some of my own entitled encounters, which sadly feature my own father. Yeah, you read right. I was raised by an entitled parent and somehow, thankfully, managed to turn relatively normal. And it's only my third time posting to Reddit, so sorry in advance if the format is all weird. Also, I might make a couple of posts, just because I know it will get long. Sorry about that too. My dad has always been a real jerk. One who I have cut ties with and have been much happier in life since doing so. 
but I have many memories of his entitlement and general jerkness. He was, and sadly is, an alcoholic. For my and my brother's birthdays and at Christmas, he would always buy something that he wanted as our presents just so he could take them. If he had any projects, he would get us to come help, but then after like five minutes, he'd say he'd be right back and disappear for hours. We'd usually find him on the couch, having a beer or asleep or something, even if the project was one that a child shouldn't really be left alone with. For example, once he left me alone with a table saw that I had no idea how to use. He'd also literally destroy anything we had if he didn't like it, even if it was the most innocent thing, like a toy. And with that bit of knowledge, here comes our real story. My older brother, bro for the story, saved a lot of his money from various odd jobs and things to buy a replica of a sword from a TV series or a movie that he liked. Don't remember which one. And it was a really well-made replica. Really expensive, too. Bro was super proud of being able to buy it, but my dad, not so much. He went on about how my brother shouldn't even like his favorite show to begin with, let alone buy crap that was related to it. But my mom said it was my bro's money and he could use it as he saw fit, so long as bro didn't play with the sword, a rule which went for me too, but I was allowed to look at it. Bro agreed and put it in his room, planning to save more money to buy a wall mount for it. Fast forward to a week later, and the sword goes missing. Bro comes to me and questions me about it, but I don't know a thing about it. He asks mom, she says no. Then he asks dad, who proceeds to ground him for accusing him of stealing. Fast forward to two more weeks, and I'm playing in our backyard. At the time, we lived off a small bluff or slanted cliff that had woods and a small creek at the bottom, and my friends and I would play down there all the time. While we were playing down there, I found my brother's sword laying in a thicket near ruined. How it got there, I had no idea at the time. But I dug it up and dragged it back up the bluff to the house to show my brother, but met my dad in the yard on the way. Where did you find that? At the bottom of the bluff. My dad then snatches the sword from me and looks me dead in the eye, saying, If you tell your brother about this, I will take all of your toys and throw them away too. He then stormed off and I ran to my room, scared. From then on, whenever something of mine went missing, my dad really hated Pokemon for some reason and wouldn't let me own any of the toys or cards, so I owned some in secret. I would go down the bluff and usually find it there somewhere in the leaves and mud. This went on until my teens and it really made me distrustful of my dad because I was afraid he'd steal and destroy my stuff. Years later, bro grew up, moved out and got married, and gave me an adorable niece, and my mother divorced my dad shortly after I became engaged and was making plans to move in with my husband. During this time, my dad's entitlement became worse. After getting some necessary furniture for our new home, I called my dad to let him know that I was coming over the next day to pick up some of my things. He said it was fine, but that he would be at work when I was over, so I said that was okay, since I was only getting my clothes at the time. The next morning, I show up at my old home to get my stuff, only to find that my key won't fit in the door. Turns out, my dad had changed the locks on all the doors, and had changed the disarming code on the alarm system. I managed to open the garage door via code, so I couldn't unset it once it started blaring. I ended up having to wait for the cops, and while I did, I called my dad. Hello, OP. What is it? I'm at work, so make it quick. Dad, did you change the locks on the house? I had him on speakerphone so the cops could hear. Yes, I did it last night. Why? I told you yesterday that I was coming to get my clothes. Because you don't live here anymore. You live with that boyfriend of yours, and I don't want you in the house by yourself. I don't remember how the rest of the conversation went, but I had to end it because the cops showed up. I just explained the situation to them and showed them my ID, which was still in my old name, so I wasn't arrested or anything. And they did ask if I wanted to press charges, since technically my dad was my landlord 
and I was a tenant that he was denying access to my property, but I said no. A week later, I was finally able to get him to let me in to get my stuff, but not without dad trying to stop me from taking them. Physically, he literally was pushing on the boxes I was carrying so I couldn't step out the door. I decided it would be best to just replace some of my things, mostly clothes, cosmetics, etc., rather than deal with him again. But the entitlement continued, and he started to call me almost constantly throughout the day, while I was at work, at home, wherever, expecting me to do him favors because I still lived in town. I'll stop here for now and make a continuation sequel post later. I think that's enough of my entitled father for now. Thanks for reading and hope to see this in a future video someday. Misadventures with My Entitled Father, Part 2 Hey, me again, with more stories about my entitled father. Sorry for spamming the sub, it's not my intent, I just don't want to make one crazy long post. So, after replacing most of the stuff that my dad was holding hostage, I stopped trying to go over and stopped trying to convince him to let me in to get said stuff. He noticed and started calling and emailing me constantly for whatever contact he could get. This included forcing me to do favors for him with some sort of an excuse as to why he needed my help. Once, I had company over one day, and he called me up demanding a ride to pick up his car from the auto shop. Dad, I have company over right now. I can't. My dad says, loudly enough that my friend can hear him over the phone. Well, kick them out and come get me anyway. I was appalled and told him he would wait until my friend left for me to come get him and hung up. The rest of my friend's visit was a bit awkward after that, but still a good time. After my friend left, I went to go get my dad as promised and he didn't say a word to me the whole drive, not even a thank you after dropping him off. Not that I was expecting one, of course. After that, though, I decided that I would not answer his calls or emails unless it was an emergency. He would always, and I mean always, leave a voicemail when he called, so I could always tell if it was important or not, but I had to use night shift on my phone so that his calls would stop waking me up after midnight. After his calls would go unanswered, he tried sabotaging me at work to get my attention. I ended up working for a different branch of the same company he had a part-time job at once, and he was still in touch with a lot of his old friends who worked there. He started having them over more and started having them out for lunch, which he never did before, and started telling them outright lies about me. The first lie that I never told him I was getting married and never invited him to the wedding. He was invited, but didn't show. The second was that I was turning down the position I had been offered earlier in the season in favor of a position at another branch. Thankfully, his friends, who are decent people, unlike him, checked their facts and found out that he was outright lying to them, which ended up saving me from being fired because my boss thought I was not going to show up for work since I had accepted a different position. But after hearing from them, he called me and checked for himself if it was true. When I ran into one of these people and they told me what had happened, I was furious. I called my husband and he was pretty much done with my dad's antics and he insisted that we go and get the remainder of my belongings from my dad so we could cut all ties with him and not need any more. For clarification, the last of my things that were left at my dad's house was a collection of musical boxes that I had accumulated over the years. Some of them are actually very rare and valuable as antiques and were also passed down to me from various relatives, so they've always been important to me. So my husband wrote my dad an email, essentially telling him when we were coming for the musical boxes and that if he tried any of his usual tricks, we would call the police and report him for denying a former tenant access to their property. Don't know for sure if we could do that, but my husband seemed confident we could play that card if we had to. Long story short, we arrive and find my father, thoroughly sauced, sitting in front of my old bedroom door blocking access to it, in nothing but his briefs. My husband says, Entitled Dad, move. We need to get into the room. Entitled Dad, drunk and slurring and hand gestures. I literally couldn't understand him. It was that bad. Move. Come on. 
shoo. And he started very gently nudging my dad aside until my dad rolled out of the way and crawled off. Yes, crawled. We got my music boxes and left, and the next morning got a call from my mom that the police had been trying to reach me. I asked why, and she said that someone had stabbed my dad after we left last night. I freaked out and called the officer in charge, and the conversation was as pretty much as follows. I'm explaining to the officer what happened and why I didn't answer my phone last night when they called. Okay, we figured it was something like that. We did some looking around, and it looks like his wounds were self-inflicted. You mean he... stabbed himself? Well, it more looks like he fell and landed on a glass and got some of it in his side and tried to cut it out of himself while intoxicated. There's no actual evidence of assault. I literally facepalmed over the phone, then thanked the officer and hung up. After getting off the phone, I called my mom back to inform her, and she called my bro to fill him in as well. He came up, he lives out of state, and the two of us visited my dad in the hospital, and the doctors told us that my dad had also, at some point very recently to that time, had a stroke due to his addiction to alcohol. Long story short, my dad ended up having to have a caretaker come and look in on him to make sure he would take his meds, and my brother filed for power of attorney for my dad so we could keep an eye on his finances and make sure he couldn't cancel the caretaker service because he was adamant that he didn't need this bullcrap. He had to be in the hospital for about a month, which gave me and my brother time to clean up and prepare his house for him to live there safely. Dad collected certain things we had to get rid of for his own safety, as well as get rid of all of his liquor stashes around the house. While we were cleaning and searching, we found an envelope with lots of money in it. Bro counted it and said it was close to $4,000. So the first thing we did was head to Dad's bank and deposit it into his account so we could use it towards his medical expenses. We were actually super happy about finding that money because Bro said Dad's finances weren't that great, but he thankfully had a really good long-term care insurance that would help. Dad ends up back at home. Bro goes home, and I settle back into a normal routine when I get a call. Hello? Hello, OP. It's Dad. Oh, hey, Dad. How are you feeling? I was being nice because, one, I was worried about him. He may be a jerk, but he's still my dad, and I'm a decent person. And two, I was hoping that the whole experience would bring some kind of change to him. I'm fine. I just had a question. Were you in my house while I was in the hospital? Yes, bro and I both were. We had to clean up all the blood and stuff, remember? Well, did you find an envelope with money in my desk? Oh, that. I thought this was a bit weird, because as soon as we found the money, we told Dad we were putting it in his bank account, and he seemed okay with that. Yes, we put it into your bank account, remember? Ah, oh, you stupid! <laughs> Excuse me? I asked if you were stupid, OP. That money wasn't yours to touch or take. Neither of us took it. We put it into your bank to help with your hospital bills. Of all the stupid things. He then proceeds to go on a rant about how stupid and ungrateful I was. You know what? Goodbye. I hung up and haven't spoken to him since. His caretakers have called me every once in a while to keep me in the loop about his health and to ask me for permission to call the police on him when he barricades himself inside his house. But other than that, I've washed my hands of him and he hasn't been able to reach me either. Think whatever patron god or goddess is listening. Well, that does it for my stories about my entitled father. Sorry if they got too long and about having to post them in two parts, but honestly, it gave me a chance to vent. Thanks for reading, and hope to see these in a future video. <coughs> Next we've got... Mom kicks me out three months prior to enlistment over a dirty garage. Hello, Mr. Reddit. Watched pretty much all your stuff. Good running listening material. Took me a while to think of something that actually met the criteria, but this came up in conversation the other day. First time poster, long time lurker, English first language, etc., turned out longer than expected. Most stories involving my mom aren't near this bad, and even this story isn't as extreme as some on here. 
But after talking to my family over the past six years, I realized she wasn't exactly great as a parent or person in general. My mom is well off, thanks to a business she hates, and spends exorbitantly on things she doesn't need, and takes on things she doesn't need too, even though she complains constantly about being stressed. She's textbook borderline personality disorder. She gets shrieky at a moment's notice, and nothing is ever her fault. It's a miracle on par with the resurrection of God her employees haven't left her. After I graduated high school, she offered to pay for college in the condition I go locally, but I knew at that she had hold that over my head for the rest of my life, and I didn't want to stay in that crummy little town full of people I didn't like. I was having none of it. Wanting to get the heck out of Dodge ASAP, and without much in the way of options, I opted to join the military. She begged and pleaded with me not to go, but I really didn't care. The rest of my family, almost entirely on my dad's side, were supportive of me. She even tried to sabotage me by making me late to a meeting with the recruiter. I didn't have a car at the time, and the recruiter was an hour away. We showed up a full two hours late to the time I had told her. She said, Sorry, in a voice I didn't believe. I looked at her dead-eyed and said, No problem, we're right on time. I had intentionally told her the wrong time by exactly that match, and we had just barely made it. Papers went through, I went to MEPS, and a ship-out date was set, six months out. So I'd be stuck with her a while longer. No big deal. Well, it was pretty terrible. Besides being bored as heck, she came up with ridiculous tasks that needed to be done. Cutting overgrown grass over five acres with a push mower that jammed constantly, dealing with horses and hay that I was violently allergic to, hives, sneezing, wheezing, etc., and her pet construction projects and blazing southern summer sun, as well as paperwork at her business. She paid me $15 a week for dozens of hours a week. Indentured servant is a word that comes to mind. The last straw was when she called me down and told me to clean the garage. She has a lot of cats. I mean a lot. The specific number at that time escapes me, but at least 15. With at least 5 or 6 of those living in and out of the garage and spraying everywhere. The place was jam-packed full of crap my mom hadn't used or looked at in years covered in cat urine and you couldn't even see the concrete, let alone park the car. I told her, no, clean it up yourself. I admit, she was letting me live there, but there were limits to what you could expect from others, and she had passed that limit eons ago. She didn't take this well. She screamed, tried to hit me, and storm off. I took a deep breath. This was so typical of her. I didn't even think much of it anymore. So I walked back inside and hear her on the phone with my grandfather. She said something along the lines of, Come pick this little crap up. I don't want him here. Now, if Jesus could beat a man in a bar fight, he'd be my grandfather. He doesn't know everything, doesn't claim to know everything, but he's kind and firm in what he believes is right and will rain down heck on you if you somehow manage to upset him. And my mom had done just that. He called me up two minutes later, told me to get my stuff and meet him out front in 15 minutes. No complaints from me. I jammed a small bag full of clothes in my computer and was out the door in minutes flat. My mom stands out there with me, and sure enough, in 15 minutes, he pulls up. Get in the car, he says to me, and I do so without a word. My mom starts complaining to him so loud, I can hear her perfectly from 20 feet away all sorts of nasty things about me. My grandpa, just as firm and expressionless as the eastern island heads, looks down at her, says to her loudly, without yelling, Shut up! Turns around and walks away. My mom just stared dumbfounded as we drove off. I guess she isn't used to being told no, and still isn't. I ended up staying with my grandparents for the next three months, helping them around the house, mowing their reasonably sized lawn, and helping grandpa with various things. Keyword, helping. He never gave me a task just to disappear into the nether, only to return expecting it done. My mom, probably realizing that she just lost her almost free labor, 
calls again and again, begging me to come back. Sorry, Mom, I got things to do, I said, lying through my teeth. Compared to that psychotic mess, my training instructors were teddy bears with mean faces. Grandpa taught me that to go to wall for my friends and take not a hint of crap from anyone else, and unlike other people who just talk big, he sticks to it unwaveringly. This didn't make me popular in the political realm of the military, but made me popular with co-workers, even now that I'm out in the civilian world. And our final story of the day. drive through idiots try to start a fight with me and my girlfriend. Hello, Mr. Reddit. I love your videos and the stories you read. It's the reason I tried my best to write this to be in one of your videos. This is my first post ever, so if this doesn't look good or isn't well written, then sue me. Just kidding. So I live in Arizona, south of Phoenix. It's pretty open out here and not much to do. I recently moved out here within a year, so I don't really have a lot of friends to speak of. A year of beginning out here alone drove me crazy, so I did the only thing sensible. I created a Tinder account. I went on many dates, but one girl stood out to me the most. She is as crazy alone as me, since she recently moved out from Maryland. Me moving from Illinois, we had the same problem with how hot it gets, how crappy drivers are out here, and how we hated any authority figures. With nothing to do and really nowhere to go, I thought up some fun at a paintball place that I had been going to for the past month. Me and girlfriend went to play some games. It was an all-indoor place and really small, so really only new players went there, which meant easy pickings for me. I actually used to play on a small paintball team back in Illinois, so you can see how this usually went when I played there. But girlfriend didn't really want to play, so we decided to leave a little before closing and head up into the mountain to chill out and talk about our lives and what we miss from our homes. After that, we decided to go home. Over an hour from our houses, we decided to stop at a fast food restaurant that will remain anonymous. We order 40 nuggets because they do 149 for 10 nuggets. We're waiting in line for quite a little bit, but we didn't care. We were talking about stupid stuff as we usually do. We're second in line waiting when we hear yelling and screaming from the car in front of us. This lady, our absolute jerk as girlfriend would say, was complaining to the window worker about how this is unacceptable how long they had to wait. We've got me, Keanu Reeves. Made you double check that one. We've got my girlfriend, the love of my life. And we have entitled mom. Why are you making us wait this long? It's been 25 minutes since we ordered. I have a five and a seven year old who are hungry and need to be in bed for school tomorrow. Keep in mind, it's like 9 p.m. This is BS. Right, everyone? She sticks her goblin-looking face out the driver's side window, thinking that everyone's on her side. My girlfriend says, Maybe you should shut up and leave already. At this point, I look at my now-girlfriend with the biggest grin I could make, and I proceed to stare down the entitled mom with a huge smile and a shrug that was so sarcastic that Jim Carrey wanted to sue me. This is when it gets really interesting. Entitled mom, actually dumbfounded by what girlfriend said, went silent for a couple of seconds before she opened her mouth. What did you say? You should stop complaining and get those kids to bed. I'm trying to keep what she said PG-13 because it was a lot worse than that. This is when the passenger side door opens. Expecting entitled mom's husband to step out, we were terrified as to what we had gotten ourselves into. Out walks another woman. We have stumbled into the two Karens. God had left us and the sky grew black clouds of thunder when she stepped out of the minivan. Me, about to run for the nearest shelter, watches and attempts, keyword attempt, to girlfriend, get out of my car to face down this parlay with the owner Karen. But girlfriend can clearly shoot daggers out of her eyes and this lady froze in her tracks as girlfriend got really close to her. Other entitled mom. What gives you the right to talk to us like that? What gives you the right to yell at these people as if they are in the wrong here? You need to grow up. We have kids in the car and they need to get home to sleep for school tomorrow. But they can't sleep until they get something to eat. I babysit kids all the time 
I know how kids are when they're hungry, but that gives you no reason to act like kids yourself. This went on for some time, until the employee gave entitled moms their food, in which they hopped back in their car and proceeded to flick us off while they had kids in the car. We drove up and apologized to the employee and continued on our day. This is a quick PSA for people who think it's okay to treat fast food employees like trash. They're making a living making food for you and your kids. Respect them. Fast food might not be the best line of work, but it is an honest job, and I have very high respect for people like that. Entitled Mom Believes I'm Too Old to Be Watching Toy Story 4 When Toy Story 4 was released here in Brazil, I was laser-focused on watching it in the theaters. On the day of release, I went to the shopping mall where the cinema was located and I was in line to buy the ticket. Behind me, I heard some kids excitedly talking about watching the movie too and I was glad that these kids were hyped for Toy Story 4 too. When it was my turn to buy a ticket, I informed the ticket seller I wanted a ticket for Toy Story 4 and that's when I heard a Phew! coming from behind me. It was the aforementioned kid's mother our entitled mom for this tale. This ticked me off, but the ticket seller noticed and just gave me a forget her head shake and I continued with the purchase. When it was time for me to select my seat, I chose the perfect one, right in the middle of the cinema. Not too high, nor too low. Perfect. I guess Karen saw that I had the perfect seat and let out an <laughs> and when I looked over to her, she was glaring at me as if she were expecting me to give her something. And this is what follows. But let's introduce our cast here. Cast, we've got Entitled Mother. We've also got me. Story, when I saw Entitled Mom glaring at me, I was already upset and unpolitely said, The heck are you looking at? Watch your tone, young man. Aren't you a bit too old to be watching Toy Store? Yes, she actually said Toy Store. First off, the movie's name is Toy Story, with a Y. Secondly, it's none of your business what movie I decide to watch. Why don't you mind your own business? Ugh, aren't you disrespectful? Where are your parents? I'm sure they won't be too pleased with your rudeness, kid. I'm not a kid. I'm 21 years old, and I'm here alone. And actually, they taught me to stand my ground when someone like you... An entitled jerk gets in my face about something that you shouldn't even be a part of. How dare you! You brat! You shouldn't even be watching this. This is a movie for kids. You're probably some loner who lives off your parents' paychecks, doesn't work or even go to school. Wow, you're a major jerk. I truly pity these kids. I bet they don't have many friends over considering you'd be there at home waiting and you'd probably scare off whatever friends they bring over. For your information, my kids are super popular at their school. They have lots of friends. Lady, do you see this? I stretch out my closed fist towards her and I say, This is the amount of hoots I give, whether your kids are popular or not. Now, would you kindly leave me alone? I'll say it again. You're too old to be watching kids' movies. Anyone with half a brain would think the same. By this time, a small crowd of people had gathered to watch this, including the people in line behind us, and many of them had a <laughs> this is a crazy lady look on their faces. An entitled mom looks around for support, but nobody says a darn word. I decide to fire back. And you? You're too old to be alive. Geez, Grandma, go have a tea or something and chill the heck out. She was 40-ish, but I really wanted to mess with her. I'm not old. I'm not a grandmother. Don't you dare call me that again. This entitled mom's face had turned red, and she had her cheeks puffed as she was trying to hold back her crying. But tears were already flowing down her cheeks, and she stuttered in between words due to her crying. I'm a young woman. Still, I'm not old. Oh, my mistake. I assumed these were your kids. 
They're your grandkids, aren't they? You should be proud. I just hope you get to live long enough to see them having kids of their own. These are my kids, not my grandkids. S stop calling me old. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Whoa. Are you having a midlife crisis? But you're an old woman. You're way past the midlife. You're reaching the end of life. That doesn't make sense. How can a grandma... I let out a huge shout to that one. Be having a midlife crisis. And this entitled mom was having a full-out temper tantrum. She was constantly crying out loud. And she seemed to have some low self-esteem if she was crying like a toddler by being called old. Sheesh. Her kids were understandably scared, but were quiet nonetheless, carrying away with each other. By this time, I was done, and I just turned around quietly and finished the purchase. The ticket seller's mouth was twitching. She was trying so hard not to laugh. While some people in the crowd were laughing, others thought I went a little too far, and I should apologize. Now, any person with a soft heart would have felt bad, but me? <laughs> I'm a jerk. A petty jerk at that. After finishing my purchase, I threw one last salt in the entitled mom's wound. Well, this was entertaining, but I have some other things to do. Since my movie starts at night, I'll come back later. See you later, Grandma. You jerk! Me in the distance. Took you this long to figure it out? And that was it, ladies and gents. No arrests, no accusations, no assaults, no my little angel deserves this more than you crap. Just a typical entitled mom getting her nose into someone else's business and giving her worthless and meaningless take on the subject at hand. Next up we've got Entitled mom and entitled kid give me two anxiety attacks and try to take away my stress ball at a theme park. Hi Mr. Reddit. I've been watching your videos for a while now, and when the events of this story happened last Saturday, I knew I had to share it with you. Although, I must apologize, this is pretty long. Obligatory note, I'm on PC and English is my first language, so feel free to roast me for any spelling or grammar errors I might make. The cast, we've got Entitled Mom, Entitled Kid, Cool Sister, and me. A little background. The entitled mom and entitled kid in this story are actually my own mother and younger brother. Entitled mom was given free tour tickets to a theme park by her employer, so she decided to take her three kids on a fun trip. Cool sister, who is the eldest, me, the middle child, and entitled kid, the youngest. I was actually pretty excited for this trip since I love roller coasters. Also, it's important that I mention I'm mentally ill and have a lot of anxiety when I'm with my family due to being mistreated by them in the past. I usually bring a fidget cube or other item with me when I'm with them to keep myself calm, but everyone seemed to be in good spirits, so I didn't think I'd need it. Big mistake. And now, the story. The day we left, things seemed to be going well. Entitled Mom, Entitled Kid, Cool Sister, and I all climbed into Entitled Mom's car and we started the two and a half hour drive to the theme park. We talked and laughed for most of the drive there, and we even stopped to get breakfast together. All in all, it was shaping up to be a good day. That is, however, until we were about an hour away from the theme park. We were in a different state by that point, and Entitled Mom wasn't familiar with the roads, despite having a navigation app open on her phone to give her directions. This app also said the directions out loud, with plenty of advanced warning before any turns, but Entitled Mom still couldn't seem to understand where it was she needed to go. Since I was sitting in the passenger seat, I was handed the phone and told to give her directions. This would ordinarily be fine, since Entitled Mom often had either myself or Cool Sister give her directions. But unfortunately, the helpful and concise directions the navigation app was giving had frustrated Entitled Mom. And what does Entitled Mom do when she's frustrated? Take it out on her kids, of course. So she started demanding that I tell her exactly where to go 
before I could even look over the directions on the app and got even more frustrated when I asked her for a moment to read them over. Eventually, I was able to start navigating Entitled Mom, but she remained frustrated and angry, and I was getting anxious. I had brought headphones so I could listen to music just in case something like this happened, but since I was the one giving directions, I couldn't do that. Navigating Entitled Mom went something like this for the most part. Where is the next turn? What lane should I be in? Do you even know where we are going? The next turn is a left turn in 10 miles. You're in the correct lane. Entitled Mom two minutes later. Where is the turn? The turn is in 8 miles. Just keep going straight. Don't give me that tone. I wasn't giving her any mean or rude tone. Give the phone to Cool Sister. At least she wants to go to the theme park. Are you trying to ruin today for me, an entitled kid? I, of course, stayed silent, since talking back to entitled mom never goes well. Being berated like that inevitably gave me an anxiety attack, at which point I handed over the phone to Cool Sister to let her navigate entitled mom while I tried to calm down. I put in my headphones and tried to tune everything out, although I could still hear entitled mom saying things like, Stop overreacting! You're fine! when I was definitely not fine in that moment. Eventually, we arrived at the theme park, and I had mostly calmed down. We went in and had a pretty good time there, all things considered. Everything was fine until about 45 minutes before the park closed for the day. Entitled Kid wanted to ride one more roller coaster before we left, one that happened to be on the opposite side of the park from where we were. We thought we could make it in time if we hurried, so Cool Sister pulled out her phone. The park offers an app with a map that uses your phone's GPS to guide you to the different attractions, and Cool Sister had downloaded it in preparation for the trip. Unfortunately, either due to the large number of people using the app or poor signal from the storms in the area, the app wasn't working. I downloaded it on my phone as well, but it still didn't work. This made Entitled Mom extremely upset. She started to yell at me and Cool Sister about how we were ruining the day for Entitled Kid. Even when we explained that it wasn't our fault that the app wasn't working. We had also gotten a paper map when we had first entered the theme park, but Entitled Mom had lost it while we were getting lunch. While still being yelled at by Entitled Mom, we started to walk across the park in hopes of finding the roller coaster on our own. What we didn't know, however, is that all roller coasters close 30 minutes before the park closes, so by the time we found it, it was already too late for Entitled Kid to ride. This made him upset, but he then saw the carousel not too far away and decided he wanted to ride that instead. To get away from Entitled Mom and Entitled Kid for a while, Cool Sister and I sent them to ride the carousel while Cool Sister refilled everyone's drink. We had bought refillable cups earlier in the day, Refills were like 99 cents each. I sat down somewhere near the carousel with everyone's bags, having a shorter anxiety attack while I waited on Cool Sister to come back. Entitled Kid ended up riding the carousel three times, after which we grabbed our stuff and started walking towards the exit to go home. Cool Sister pointed out a gift shop when we were nearing the exit, and Entitled Ma begrudgingly let us go in to look around. She said she'd buy all of us something, but gave us each a $10 limit. Cool Sister took Entitled Kid over to look at the stuffed animals. Entitled Mom stayed outside to take a smoke break, and I wandered around a bit aimlessly. I eventually found a squishy-scented toy shaped like a cake, which I thought would be helpful to use as a stress ball to keep myself calm on the ride home. I checked the price, and it was $8.99. I bought it and went outside to wait on the others. It took a while, but eventually Entitled Kid settled on a small stuffed bear and Entitled Mom paid for it. I was sitting outside on a bench, squishing the cake toy to keep myself occupied and calm. Entitled Kid noticed what I had and decided he wanted it, so he walked up to me. What's that? It's a cake toy. It's really squishy, see? Entitled Kid squished the toy and seemed to like it. Can I have it? No, kiddo. I bought this so I can stay calm. Entitled Kid started to get angry, 
and tried to take it away from me. It's mine now. I want it. I wasn't in the mood to fight with Entitled Kid, so I looked to Cool Sister for help. Cool Sister says, Entitled Kid, that belongs to OP. You can't have it. Shut up. Entitled Mom heard this and decided to intervene. On Entitled Kid's behalf. Just give it to him. You don't want him to cry, do you? Do you want OP to have another anxiety attack? OP needs to grow up. Entitled Kid is a child, so he should have the toy. Entitled Kid continued to try taking the toy away from me, and I was honestly about to let him, just so Entitled Mom would stop yelling at me. Right when I was about to, though, Cool Sister had either convinced Entitled Mom to leave me alone, or Entitled Kid's tantrum had frustrated her, so she took Entitled Kid back into the shop and bought him a squishy toy of his own. Entitled Kid came out of the gift shop with a smug look on his face, proceeding to tell me how much better his toy was than mine. I didn't care what he said, I just wanted to leave. Although Entitled Kid had a toy of his own, exactly like mine, he still tried to take mine away every chance he got while we were walking out of the theme park. I eventually had to use Cool Sister as a makeshift shield to keep Entitled Kid away from me until we got to Entitled Mom's car. After that, I plugged my headphones into my phone and just tried to forget the entire day happened as we started the drive back. Next we've got Entitled Kid wants to borrow my expensive shoes for her birthday party that I'm not invited to. This happened back when I was in high school and I have been wanting to post this story for ages. It's the most ridiculous and entitled behavior I have ever come across. I'm on mobile, English is my first language. Enjoy. The cast. We've got me, entitled kid, classmate and ex-best friend, entitled mom, my ex-best friend's entitled mother, and my mom. This story requires some contextualization. So here's the backstory. Entitled Mom and I were friends at the beginning of high school. The first high school I went to was a private school and filled with entitled kids. I have so many stories from that year I spent in that school, but we'll post them another time. Anyway, we were part of a group of four until one day she turned my whole group of friends against me for reasons I still don't understand. Silly high school jerkness. I still remember how mean she was to me and the language that she would use. All three girls cornered me and threw me the worst insults they could come up with and told me I was no longer allowed to hang out with them. I, being 13 or 14 and quite shy, burst into tears and ran away, missing a whole bunch of classes. A few kids saw me crying, but no one bothered to console or help me. Thus, our friendship ended. Now to the story. By the time I was in my final year of high school, Entitled Kid and I were in the same school. We had both moved to another school and happened to end up in the same one. Entitled Kid and I had never resolved our conflict. At the time, we were friends, and Entitled Kid and I were the same size everything. Same size clothes, same size pants, same size tops, and most importantly, same size shoes. I am a size three, and it's quite difficult to find nice shoes in this size as it's a very small adult size. Entitled Kid and I both attended our high school dance. For this dance, my mom had bought me the nicest pair of high heel shoes as a birthday fell around the same time as the dance. I wore a short dress in order to show off my new shoes, and everyone made a fuss about them. They were very high, sparkly, and a one-of-a-kind shoe. They were also very expensive. A few months later, I heard it was Entitled Kid's 18th birthday. She had invited most of the girls from my class. Side note, the school we attended had very few students as it was an academic school focused on a small student to teacher ratio. I was one of the only girls not invited. I heard she was renting a limo and they were all going clubbing in the city. A legal drinking age in my country is 18. A few days before her birthday, Entitled Kid phones me. Hi, OP. Can I borrow those shoes you wore to the dance since we are the same size and all? I want to wear them for my birthday. She tells me I can come to her birthday if she can use them. 
I reluctantly agree. While I didn't really want to go or lend her my shoes, a few of my friends were going and I thought it would be nice to experience the limo and everything else she had planned. Her parents were very wealthy, so I knew it would be a big to-do. On the day of her birthday, she phones me to ask if she can come collect the shoes. I tell her I will just bring them when I come. This is where she tells me. Oh yeah, about that. There's not going to be enough space, so you can't come anymore. Sorry. I will still need the shoes though, and you have already agreed to lend them to me. Being in total shock, I only managed to say, Um, okay? I know. I should have told her no. After thinking about everything and talking to my mom, I realized she had just pretended to invite me so that she could manipulate me into lending her my shoes, and she never actually planned to invite me. The next time she phoned, I just hung up on her and kept doing that till the time of her party. Next thing I know, Entitled Mom was on the phone with my mom. Her mom was screaming at my mom, telling her to tell me to give Entitled Kid my shoes and that I am spoiling her birthday. My mom said, Why don't you buy her her own bloody shoes? Entitled Mom told my mom, Your daughter is being selfish and should just give Entitled Kid the shoes now as OP has caused enough trouble for her by promising to lend them and now deciding not to. My mom, what about Entitled Kid inviting her, then disinviting her from the party? Why should OP lend her the shoes? It's Entitled Kid's birthday, and she can do as she pleases. My mom just hung up. I don't know what shoes Entitled Kid ended up wearing, but after the way she had treated me, she was sure as heck not going to wear mine. I never went to her birthday or spoke to her again. I did hear that she got so drunk she made a mess of herself, so I'm glad I never went and glad she wasn't in my shoes. Sorry, not a dramatic ending, but can you believe this entitlement? And our final story of the day, Entitled Manager. Hey, Mr. Reddit, my partner and I love your channel. I apologize that this story is long, but the result still makes me laugh. Now, to explain a bit, I used to work at a call center won't say which one, but I worked with phones. Our cast. We've got me. We've got my hero, my supervisor store rep. We've got the store manager and the gentleman who's the customer calling in. I got a call from a customer who was calling about exchanging his device because he got the Samsung 9 and wanted the S9+. Plus. I looked into this and saw that another agent had put in a request and it was approved. Yay, easy call. Not so fast. The gentleman then asked about the exchange for his iPhone 8 for the iPhone 8 Plus. I looked through the system and didn't see a request. Normally, you would have to just go through the process of putting the request in. However, when I was looking through the note system and found that his order had not gone through us, uh-oh, I found a problem. Yay for me. <sighs> I attract these types of calls and will post more if you want. One thing you need to know is with phones, if you want to exchange it or return it, you have to go to the point of sale. Now at this point, I was only thinking of the iPhone 8 because the other request was accepted. I asked the gentleman if he would mind being on hold while I talked to my TL, my supervisor. But to me, he was my hero. I talked to my hero and asked him what I should do because the agent before messed me up big. He asked me to find the store and call them about this, so I did. Hello, blank store department. How can I help? The rep asked. Hello, my name is OP, and I'm calling you from our company. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How can I help? The rep asked. I started to explain that a call center rep had told the gentleman the wrong info and I know it's past the 15 days to return the device, but it is not the gentleman's fault. He looked the gentleman up in his computer and asked if he could put me on hold to ask his manager what to do. Told him take his time. I'm going to explain what's going on to the gentleman. The rep comes back on and says that his manager gave him the green light. Yay! And we went over the details. After doing this, 
I found out that he had gotten the other S9 from the same store. Oh, come on. I put the gentleman back on hold and run over to my hero. I go over the new situation with him and he says to ask the store to take the other device back, but we would still send the S9 Plus to him. I call the store back and get the same rep. I apologize and explain the new problem. He puts me on hold to talk to his manager and after a while a woman comes on the phone. It's the entitled manager. She says that she will not take the S9 back because it is past the 15 days. I explained that he called and was given the wrong info and if he ships the phone to us, the barcode will not work and he will get charged for the phone. The barcode would not work because it was not shipped from our warehouse. She flat out tells me no. She processed the sale more than 15 days ago. It was two days past it and he called the day after he got the phones. I think she didn't want to lose her commission on the two sales. I asked her to hold and go get my hero. I explained that she keeps telling me no. He comes to my desk and takes the call. They argue for a good 10 minutes about the iPhone 8 and my hero says fine and that we will keep an eye on the account and credit back to charge as an agent messed up. He then checks with her about the S9 and if they would still take that phone back as they had already said yes because of the situation. The manager flat out tells him that she would not and they never said they would. When my hero says that they did and that I had told him that, she says, How do I know you're a manager? My hero was not happy about this. He says she could call another center and they could look him up in the system and why would he lie about that? She rudely replies, Whatever, I never approved this first return and my employee told OP no, we would not. And OP is a liar. My hero asks why I would lie when we would have figured something else out and that I would never lie. I am overly honest. She puts the rep I was talking to before on the line and the rep tells my hero that I was lying and he told OP no. I was so angry my face was purple. My coworkers were concerned that something serious was wrong. My hero says something that everyone that has ever called a call center will know. So, you are telling me that OP is lying to me about you telling her yes to our request? My hero asks. Yes, he replies in a certain voice. My hero just smiles and says, Did you know that this call is being recorded and I can pull it up to see if OP is lying or if you are? I had forgotten that it was being recorded, so I was sure he didn't know this. He starts talking fast and tries to cover his butt. My hero just shakes his head. The manager of the store comes back on and says that the rep is just a part-timer and doesn't know what he's doing. My hero just replies that he has part-timers too, but they know how to do their job and tells her that this call has been recorded and he will be flagging it. Click. The store manager hangs up. My hero says to process the exchange request for the iPhone 8 with detailed notes and make a massive note on it, everything on this call and to flag the store for the company. I then went back to the gentleman and explained the situation to him and what had happened with the store. He apologized to me for having to go through being called a liar and thanked me for working so hard. I tell him I'm sorry for making him stay on the phone for two hours to figure out what we should do and thanked him for not getting upset with me. I don't know what happened to the rep or manager, but I can't help but think what their faces looked like when they got told the call was being recorded. Entitled Mom Tries to Take My Lightsaber It's just a toy. I'm back. This is the story of my first ever Entitled Mom. Our cast. We've got Entitled Mom, a real jerk. We've got Entitled Kid. We've got Poe, Entitled Kid's little brother who is dressed as Poe Dameron. And me, cosplaying as Ray. And Kylo Ren, an awesome Kylo Ren cosplayer and the security guard. So this happened this fall. My state has a Comic Con every November, and this year, Gwendolyn Christie was there. Now, I am an avid cosplayer and a huge fan of Star Wars. I have loved it since I was 9 years old. That was 11 years ago. I am currently 20, but this story happened a few months before my birthday, so I was 19. I started cosplaying at 13. 
so I am a bit chubby in a way that gives me curves. Now this year, I had worked hard on my costume. I was Rey from the new trilogy, and I was doing her look from episode 7. I had gotten a really expensive replica of the Skywalker lightsaber. It was the official Black Series Rey's training lightsaber. It had been a birthday gift at the time for my 19th birthday from a friend. It cost about $150 to $175. I decided to use that for my cosplay. I also had gotten one of the toy Skywalker lightsabers. Now, the day started out fine. I went to the convention and walked around spending my money. I had run into Kylo Ren and I didn't really know him at the time, but we decided to stick together as female cosplayers alone can sometimes attract creeps. We got to know each other better and had become friends after a while. We both had prepaid to meet Gwen and had gotten our items signed. Most of our day was uneventful as we shopped around. We even entered in the costume contest together. We had a few hours to spare, so we went to the top floor of the convention center where the cosplays were hanging out. We ended up hanging around with other Star Wars cosplayers and took a lot of pictures with them. Then a long came entitled Mom. Poe was sitting around like the excited five-year-old he was and came up to me and Kylo wanting a picture. May I have a picture with you? Of course, Commander Damrin. Poe loved this, so me and Kylo Ren decided to act like our characters to make him happy. I do not take pictures with rebel scum and traitors. Come on, Benny, take a picture with us. Fine. So I put down my bag containing the signed lightsaber and my expensive lightsaber so I could pick the kid up. Entitled Mom gushed over how cute her son was as I pretended to protect him from Kylo Ren. Then I hear a lightsaber activating and turn around to see Entitled Kid holding my expensive lightsaber and the bag with my signed one too. Hey kid, mind putting those down? That's expensive. Oh, let him play with it. After all, it's just a toy. You don't need it. Um, ma'am, that is not a toy. That is a replica lightsaber, and the other one is autographed. I want these. These are mine. No, they are not. Give them back, now. Poe says, It's Ray's, not yours. I marched over and grabbed my stuff from Entitled Kid. That was a big mistake. Give those back to my son. They are toys. You are too old for them. And you are a girl. Girls don't play with lightsabers. Entitled Mom, I don't think you understand. They are mine. And there were many female Jedi. Star Wars is for everyone. You are still too old to have toys like that. She tries to grab them from me, and Kylo Ren grabs her hand. Miss, I am going to ask you to step away from my friend here. Those are not toys. One is autographed, and the other is a collectible that cost $150. Entitled Mom starts screaming. Let go of me, you jerk. Give my son his stuff, you big jerk. That was directed at me. You are playing with toys. What are you both? Are you both the R word? Now this is where I wanted to punch Entitled Mom. I was diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder, but I am high functioning. What I have used to be called Asperger's, and being called the R word sets me off. So I start going off on her. Listen here, you jerk. Don't call me that. These lightsabers together cost over $300. They are not toys, and it is perfectly okay for adults to collect this stuff. No, they are toys, and you are too old for them. Now, give them to me. At this point, someone had called security, and security guard arrived on the scene. All right, what's going on here? This woman stole my son's toys. Is this true? No, it is not. They are mine. I brought them in. Can anyone confirm this? The lightsaber is Ray's. She put it down to protect me from Kylo. Sir, I can assure you we had them all day. The one in the bag is autographed. Security guard asked me to show him the one in the bag and I did. And sure enough, on the blade is my name, followed by the words best wishes, and Gwen's signature. At this point, Entitled Mom was screaming at Poe for betraying her. Then she proceeded to grab my expensive lightsaber and tried to pull it out of my hands. 
At that point, security guard grabbed her. She ended up getting escorted out of the building with Entitled Kid. Now, Poe was not dragged out with them. I had managed to convince security guard to let Poe stay, as he didn't deserve this. Poe had this card attached to his lanyard, along with his compass that had his father's contact information. It turned out that Entitled Mom was divorced and had full custody of Entitled Kid and Poe had gone with his dad. Entitled Mom only had Poe for the day with the understanding that she was not to leave the convention center without him. Because Poe wanted to stay, security guard ended up having to babysit Poe while he waited for his dad. Poe's dad ended up coming a half hour later and stayed for the rest of the day with us. Kylo Ren and I are still friends with Poe. He had his sixth birthday last week and Kylo and I surprised him at his party by dressing up in our cosplays and being there as Kylo and Rey. His dad has put a restraining order on Entitled Mom. Next we've got... It's okay to damage your car because I'm a mom. This was one of those crazy stories. We've got Entitled Mother, we've got the kid, and me. One day I had to go do some work at the city hall and on my way back to the office I stopped my car in a parking lot from a store just to answer a call. I was inside of my car. There was no car parked around me and all places were available to park a car. At least 15 places were available. While I'm on the phone, the entitled mom arrives with her car and decides to park right next to me. Really close to me. Guess she thought the car needed company. I don't know. I didn't mind at the time until I hear and feel a huge bang on my car. So this lady basically parked the car gets out and decided that the best way to take her kid out was to bang her door with major force against my car door. Of course, I stopped the call, get out of my car and told her, yes, I believed she could still have done it by accident and not noticed. Everyone can have a bad day. Excuse me, you just damaged my door. I don't know if you noticed. Oh, sorry, I have a kid. These things aren't easy with little ones. Well, I'm sorry too. I kinda understand, but yet the door is damaged, and you must take responsibility. Let's talk about this. The entitled mom turns her back on me, goes inside the store. Kid runs after her. I locked my car and go after her. Excuse me, you can't simply damage someone's car and walk away. Listen, I have a child. These things happen. It's not a big deal. I had to pick him up and it was an accident. Sure it was, but we have insurances for these types of situations. I'm not going to pay more insurance fees for this. Have some understanding for a mother. To be honest, if she was humble and assumed her mistake like a grown woman, I could simply accept that the car was staying like this and assume the cost, maybe. But it also was major damage, and yet I could have still considered, after all, when you are focused on a child, some things can slip, like a car door. However, she was a jerk. Listen, I know dealing with children can be hard. However, you still need to accept responsibility for your mistakes. I'm a mom. I have a lot of damage on my car, and I don't go after people. Not my problem. My insurance doesn't cover mommy damages. If I want the door fixed, I have to pay it. You are scaring my child. Kid was a bit confused, but not really scared. He was checking toys from the store, quite entertained, and I wasn't screaming. She was. I work hard to get my things, and I don't want my car to be damaged. What you do with your property, it's on you. Mine, it's on me. Let's exchange insurance information and not make a big deal out of this. No, it's not a big deal. You should understand this and just assume the cost yourself. I bet you are not a mom. Every mom would understand. No, because I didn't damage my car. You did. And also, why did you decide to park next to me with so many spaces available? She went full Sheldon and said, I like that spot. Not kidding. Listen, either we exchange information or I call the police. You wouldn't do that. And besides, police will laugh at your face and even charge you for bothering a mom with a small child. Wanna bet? 
She was furious, started screaming even more, why was I doing this to her? And why can't I understand that a mother has so much to do and I had to simply accept that this is a normal situation? I know several moms that would never have this kind of behavior, so yeah, she was the crazy one. She ended up not giving me any information, so I called the police. She did leave the area with her car, but I had already taken photos of every angle and license plates. There were also cameras in the store. The police told me the car was in a gentleman's name. It was her husband's car. He was not pleased when he was told that this had happened. It seems it's not okay for her to damage any car because she is a mom. The damage of the car was paid for and I have a crazy story to tell. Moral of the story, make sure your insurance covers mommy damages. Next we've got Entitled Neighbor. Hi Mr. Reddit, this isn't your usual story, but I figured I'd share it since it's my first time coming in contact with someone like this. This is my first story, so bear with me. Here's the cast. We've got me, Karen, the entitled woman. We've got entitled husband. We've got hubby, my husband. And we've got city man, one and two, gentlemen from city hall. Here's a little backstory first. Me and my husband have just purchased our first home together as a couple. We have two toddlers. One is two and the other is one. We worked hard since Hurricane Michael to build up the money to purchase a piece of property. And thinking we struck gold, we bought it at a great deal. Only now I'm thinking that we may have bit off more than we can chew. This lady is taking over people's property. Walking the block and looking through everyone's stuff and reporting on every little thing to our city council. Every day. She dumped her cleanup from the hurricane on our property, thinking that she could just buy it from the owner since he was talking about selling it. She assumed it would be hers, and started putting her crud on it. After listening to these stories with my husband, I thought I'd share my tale. It's a long one, so I apologize, but here is where it began. April 21st, 2019. Day one of purchasing home. We begin cleanup and start working on our home. We introduce ourselves to the neighbor. Everything seemed fine. April 24th. Three days later, we get a call from City Hall that our neighbor is complaining of our property being a mess. May 30th. We get a call from City Hall again about her complaining that we are illegally burning and that we are making no effort on our property. She has also taken it upon herself to walk on our property whenever she feels like it. Me and Isaac have both caught her doing so. That night around 8 p.m., me and my husband are noticing that she has no limits to property lines, so we got approval from the city and are placing a temporary fence line along our property line to block her from having access. I walked over before leaving and was letting her know in a nice voice that we were getting a fence line ready, and also that we would be moving our RV in the next week. Conversation went exactly word for word. Hey darling, we're getting things ready for a fence since we got our lines for our property. Before even finishing my sentence. Don't you hey darling me, Jack? Whoa, excuse me. I was just trying to let you know what was going on over this next week. Karen rolls her eyes. You need to clean your property, you jerk. I'm extremely irate at her comment. I'm sorry that my property isn't being cleaned up as fast as you want, but unlike some people who sit around all day being nosy, I work during the week to provide for my family, so you better watch who the heck you're talking to. All I was doing was letting you know I will have a property fence and my RV will be moved here next week. Okay? Have a good day. Karen laughs. Oh, we'll see about that, Jack. Me walking away. Oh, we sure will. You have no idea who you're messing with. May 30th, 10.30 p.m. We went back to the property to place a deer camera on premises, so if she tried to cut my mason line for my fence, I'll have photo proof of her trespassing. Update, May 31st, 2019. We have photos of them trespassing on my property thanks to lovely deer cams. 
The husband came home and I was retrieving the SD card from the camera. He peeked around my property and slow rolled and then again the other side. Then pulled in, walked up to my fence line and was looking at it and then back at us like we did something wrong. Then the wife came back out. Watching as my husband pulled up the photos, I called local police department and was wanting to get an officer out only to find out that one was already en route. Great, less work for me. They showed up and the husband got out of the car running his mouth saying, I was trespassing on my own property and that I didn't own it and that I can't put up a fence and that I was rude to his wife yesterday. The officer walked over and I stepped out. He asked me what was going on. I let him know after many calls to City Hall and speaking with City Man 1 and City Man 2 and getting my property lines measured. I did as they suggested and put up a fence as well as a camera and that yes, I owned the property. I reached into the glove box and pulled out my bill of sale. Pulled up on Q Public that I own it as well as called the previous owner so he could confirm it. Needless to say, the husband went white. The officer asked how we would like to proceed, and my husband and I looked at each other, smiled, and said, We want a trespass, and if she crosses again, we'll press charges. Needless to say, our night was made. That's just what happens when an entitled Karen decides she wants to take over the property, makes claims that it's hers, and thinks that I'm dumb. Well, we are not. We are contractors and very well informed on how to deal with situations such as these. I figured it would make someone's night. If you want, I can keep you updated on what happens. Update. She has been giving us the evil eye since the incident, but she hasn't dared stepped onto the property or talked to us. She especially has been enjoying my yard cleaning since I do it at 10 o'clock at night, like mowing the lawn and weed eating. And our final story of the day. Neighbor called me out for putting my bike in the bike shed, r slash entitled people featuring r slash let's not meet. This story happened about two years ago, but I remember it so vividly, the dialogue could still be accurate. Note, English isn't my first language, so yada yada yada. Backstory. I was living in an apartment building on the first floor. Next to my front door was a wall which blocked most of the hallway. At the moment of this story, I had been living there for about five years and a month prior, my new upstairs neighbors had moved in. Because there were only six apartments in this building, we shared a building outside, which everyone used to put their bikes away. There was an unwritten rule, everyone had their own spot for their bike. Visitors who stayed there overnight and had a bike to put away were on a first come first serve basis. One of the other unwritten rules was the doorway was supposed to be empty with enough room to comfortably move your bike into place. The cast. We've got me. Guess who? I'm a female. We've got the upstairs neighbor. Not a native speaker of our language, but still fluent. Also kind of a jerk. He's a male. And we've got Karen. Visitor upstairs neighbor. Only had the ability to yell instead of talk. The story. I had been in the hospital for a couple of days for an emergency surgery and after recovering at my parents' place, I was finally well enough to move back into my own house. I could ride my bike again but needed extra room in the shed to move my bike into place. After I had gotten back from shopping, I opened the door and saw someone else had put their bike on my spot. I moved the bike so I could comfortably put my bike in the shed. I got into the apartment put away my groceries, and had a little nap to sleep the anesthesia off. After about an hour or two, I was woken up by pounding on the door. I opened the door and was greeted by my upstairs neighbor. He appeared to be alone. The following conversation took place. Hey, did you move a bike in the shed? Yes, that was the only way I could put my bike inside. What did you do with the bike you moved? I carefully moved it into an empty spot. Are you sure you were careful? Yeah, certain movements still hurt. I just had surgery a couple of days ago and the bike wasn't mine, so... Karen, standing behind the wall where I couldn't see her, 
Hence, I hadn't noticed her. You shouldn't have put your dirty claws on my bike. If there is even a scratch, I'm going to sue you. She is right. There aren't assigned spaces, so you should have just put your bike in the empty space, or you could have just left yours outside. Excuse me? I'm going to sue you, you dirty jerk. Why didn't you come up and ask me to move it, if it was that important to you? Just go and ask us to move it next time, will you? Sure. You should. That bike was over 1,000 euro. Karen, calm down. Me staring blankly, flabbergasted. If I see one scratch on it, you will rue this day. Next time, I'll come up and ask. Could I just go back to bed? I told you I had surgery a couple of days ago, and I'm still tired. Well, that didn't help, did it? Karen, don't go there. Let's go. Me, closing the door. Karen, please, let's not meet. I'm just glad I moved out of that place. Entitled Mom freaks out on me for eating non-vegetarian food and drinks at a barbecue place. Hi everyone, I'm on a phone. English is decent, yada yada yada. Background. This is a story about my 18th birthday celebrations. This takes place in India. To make my birthday special, we decided to dine at Barbecue Nation, a really great place. So, this is how the place works. There are barbecue grills in the middle of each table, and a little flag. When you raise the flag, the staff starts bringing you barbecue on those sticks, don't know what they're called. And when you put it down, they stop, and you can have a buffet-style main course. So, since the place is usually full, you have to book online in advance and give vegetarian or non-vegetarian preferences for the barbecue. You could also book the place for special occasions. I, my dad, mom, my uncle, and his fiance were sitting at a table. I, my uncle, and his fiance are non-vegetarians. My dad eats non-vegetarian, but prefers vegetarian. My mom is pure vegetarian. I and my to-be aunt are atheists, while mom, dad, and uncle are Hindus. None of them are zealots and they are very modern and never force their religion down others' throats. We have checked our reservation and settled down, and our conversation is multilingual, switching between English and Marathi as per convenience. The waiter brings in our initial barbecue. Time to meet the cast. We've got me. We've got my dad, my mom, my uncle, my uncle's fiance, entitled mom, nice husband, nice kid, the waiter, and the manager. The entitled parent, nice kid, and nice husband were on a table beside us and were fussing over one thing or another since we came. As I took the first barbecue, chicken I assume, she came over to us and tapped my dad on the shoulder. Excuse me? Yes? What is that, may I ask? Points towards the mutton barbecue. Uh, barbecue? Can you please not eat non-vegetarian food sitting beside us? Now, I'm trying to ignore the lady and get some food inside me. I'm starving, when she lunges ahead and knocks it out of my hand. What? You ungrateful child. I just stopped you from sinning. You should thank me. I try to say something, but she ignores me and speaks to my dad. You shouldn't pass your sinning habits to your child. You... Untranslatable no-no word. He should be raised in a godly way. Here we go. Shut up, jerk. Why don't you leave my family alone and buzz off? I paid to be here and I will eat whatever I want. Entitled mom turns to my mom. As a woman, you shouldn't tolerate your husband sinning. You should divorce him and raise him yourself. Lady, don't tell me how to raise my kids. This is a free country and I'll eat whatever I want. My mom, the darling she is, almost never swears. Now, we had started eating in earnest, and very soon, the first servings had disappeared, despite her objections. As the waiter came with second servings, she knocked them out of his hand. What an outrageous waste of good barbecue. Now I'm furious. One thing you should know about me is that I don't follow any religion, but am interested in the mythology and history of all of them, 
and have read not just the Hindu scriptures, but also the Bible and the Torah for pleasure reading. If you're so into religion, why are you spilling food, you jerk? Doesn't your religion say that food is as precious as the God who created the world? She has no answer to this. Now, Nice Husband steps in and takes her back amid renewed shouting. He promises to pay us back before leaving, and we trust this guy. So we get yet another serving of barbecue. After which comes the funny part. My dad orders drinks for the adults. I was not allowed. Uh, drinking age is 21, though voting is 18, including uncle's fiance. The drinks arrive and then the entitled mom looks wide-eyed as fiance drinks her alcohol. Before either nice husband or nice kid could restrain her, she comes over to our table and sweeps the glass from fiance's hand. The glass falls and shatters. We were lucky that fiance didn't get hurt. Entitled mom started screaming about how she wasn't old enough and shouldn't be allowed to drink and tries to slap her when my uncle, who's a big man, catches her hand and pushes her back forcefully. They begin a screaming match. Now, fiance does have a baby face and is shorter than I am, but she certainly doesn't look like a kid as she's just a year younger than my uncle. Finally, entitled mom says the magic words. I want to see your manager. My uncle says, No, I want to see the manager. The manager comes and she begins a rant about how my family was corrupting me, how fiancé wasn't old enough, and how we had thrown a glass at her. Now, fiancé is on the verge of tears. She's quite faint-hearted. Fiancé shows manager her ID with shaking hands and the security footage proved that the entitled mom was talking BS. So, instead of paying only us for our barbecue serving, she'd have to pay the hotel for the glass she shattered. When she realized this, she bolted for the door, leaving Nice Kid and Nice Husband behind. Nice Husband paid for all the expenses while Nice Kid apologized. Manager called mall security and Entitled Mom was caught. We did press charges, and the Entitled Mom is locked up in an institution somewhere while I got a free birthday cake and coupons from the hotel for all my troubles. So, yay. Next we've got Entitled Stepmom and Step Aunt Make Me Share My Sweet Sixteen. Sup, Mr. Reddit? I've been watching your videos for a while and thought to share my own story. For the cast, we've got me, the stepchild, and therefore black sheep of the family. We've got Step Beast, or Entitled Stepmom. We have Entitled Step Aunt, Entitled Cousin 1, and Entitled Cousin 2, Nice Great Aunt, Nice Aunt, and so we begin. Bit of backstory. I moved to Florida with my step family a while ago, and the Entitled stories are many, but I'll stick with this one. I was super excited for my 16th birthday because I was all ready to have a big party and friends from school and to be finally like a normal kid. Stepmom never really let me do normal kid stuff. Hanging out with friends outside of school? Nope. Studying to get my permit? Definitely not. It's not like I was a bad kid, but she was just so controlling, and so was nearly the rest of her family. My father was a puppet parent and did whatever she wanted, going with the flow of her nonsense, but they had promised this year that I could pick where to have my party and who to invite. I was going to pick a skating rink, Roller, not ice. Because I thought it would be a fun idea. I was even all hype about it at school, telling all my friends about it and asking how they like roller skating. I had run the idea by stepmom and she stated that sounded fun and that she would hammer out the details with my father. The day of my birthday comes around. It's a school day and a Thursday, but they had told me it could happen after school. They were going to send the invites to their parents on Facebook so that way they would know who would be picking up and dropping off the kids for the party. Makes sense. You know, safety is the key. But it never happened. They never sent those invites because my friends were surprised when I told them that day was the day of the party and their parents wouldn't let them go without advance notice. I went home and was upset, so I did what any distraught teen would do. I hid in my room. Stepmom came by a bit later to bring me into the kitchen, where lo and behold, there was Entitled Cousin 1 and Entitled Cousin 2, already seated at the table with birthday crowns on their heads. I was confused. I was handed my own crown 
and was set down at the table. A while later, a few other step relatives entered the house bearing gifts and all. Only three of them were for me. I'm not selfish and don't care much about presents, but this was my 16th birthday, a birthday promised to have been thrown at a skate rink. I questioned about it and was told to be grateful we were celebrating at all. Pardon me? Like, seriously? The reason I was given was that Entitled Cousin 1 and 2 wanted to have a shared birthday party with their older cousin, which, on any other birthday, I would have considered sweet. Not to say the thought wasn't. But they weren't very good at skating, and their mother, Entitled Aunt, wasn't comfortable with them being around a bunch of rowdy teenagers. They brought out the cakes, and there was two, none of which had my name on it. They didn't even buy me a cake. I don't care if it was just a cupcake or a cookie, but the fact that not only did they not let me celebrate with my friends, but were now expecting me to just ignore the fact that it was my special day threw me over the edge. Wait, so it's my 16th birthday. We were supposed to have gone skating with my friends invited, and now I'm here? And I don't have a cake? I'll admit, it sounded bratty, but for one, I was a whiny teen, and for two, I'd had enough of my self-important aunt who had been gloating about her kids' birthdays the entire time. Kids whose birthdays weren't for another month. Kids who were smugly watching me become more and more upset about being ignored on my 16th birthday. We didn't buy one. You are sharing with your cousins. I was shocked and appalled. This obnoxious lady. My dad was at work and so couldn't intervene or stop her madness. You should be grateful that your cousins love you enough to share their birthday. Their birthday? Today is my birthday. If anything, I'm sharing my birthday. Stepmom looked angry at my attitude. You are being so selfish right now. Sweet Entitled Cousin 1 and Entitled Cousin 2 just want to have a birthday with their older cousin. I was again astonished because those kids are anything but sweet. Entitled Aunt has four demon spawn offspring that are as entitled and nasty as the rest of them. At this point, nice great aunt steps in because she saw the commotion and wanted to see what was wrong. OP, what's wrong? What's wrong is that it's my 16th birthday, supposed to be my sweet 16, and we were going to go to the roller rink and my friends were going to be there, and now I have no friends here, and no cake, and it's my birthday. I was almost in hysterics because these people had found ways to ruin every other holiday for me for years, but until now had been decent about my special day, and I was just so over and done with all of their nonsense and lying and attitude towards me. Is this true, stepmom? Stepmom was silent for a bit, basically having been caught by her own aunt in the act of being a witch to a 16-year-old who just wanted a nice birthday. Well, yes, but you see... Luckily for you and OP, nice aunt had called me earlier because she heard from you that OP wasn't going to have a cake, so I got one for her. Now, I understand that you might have been trying to save money, but it's the girl's 16th birthday. Show some sense, stepmom. Nice great aunt then summoned over her husband, who hadn't spoken at all during this exchange. He walked over with a beautiful ice cream cake with pink rose icing flowers and my name in cursive on top. I was happy that she had thought about me and was glad someone was on my side for once. She set the cake in front of me and my cousins automatically started wailing about how my cake was prettier than theirs. Here's where Entitled Aunt steps in. Where did you get that cake from? I bought it for OP because I was told she didn't have one. What do you mean? She's sharing Entitled Cousin's cake. Really? You were going to make a girl share someone else's cake on her 16th birthday? Of course. The brat doesn't deserve her own cake anyways. Nice great aunt looked stern now. Of course she does. As I remember, your kids don't have their birthday until next month. So the fact that you are even having her share her sweet 16 with two children is bad enough. She's lucky to get to share her birthday with my kids. I think she's just being ungrateful. In fact... I think she doesn't deserve that cake. It should be for my boys instead. Nice great aunt, looking completely done with her nonsense. It will not be for your boys. It will be for her. 
Your boys have cakes already. Your boys have tons of presents. She gets to have her cake. Insert Mr. Reddit Re here. <gasps> My boys have been good this year. They deserve this cake more than that little witch. She used a different word, but I'm keeping it clean here. She's nothing but a lazy slob who doesn't even help around the house and whines about having to watch my kids for me. Enough, entitled aunt. I will not have you insulting this girl on her birthday. And if you can't calm down, step outside to take a breath. You're ruining the party. Entitled aunt, realizing that the rest of the party is staring at her, she stomps off to the front door, which she slams shut. Nice great aunt apologizes for entitled aunt's behavior to me and cuts me my first slice of cake. It wasn't perfect as an ending, because I got an earful later from entitled stepmom about causing a scene, but that cake was the sweetest I had ever had in my life, and the fact that someone had finally put entitled aunt in her place for once made my lecture afterwards worth every second. Next we've got... Entitled mom tries to get a pizza, but we're closed. This is the third time I've had to post this for some reason. I don't know why. This happened to me last night, and I swear I thought entitled parents were just something people make up for fun. But no, they are real, and I met one last night. But you're here to hear about the entitled parent, so here we go. Cast, we've got the entitled mom, the manager, and me. So I've been working at a pizza restaurant for the past three weeks now, and I work in the back cleaning dishes, mopping the floor, and cleaning the tables, etc. Now, it was about 10.20pm or so when the last customers had left with their food. If a customer comes in between 9.45pm and 10pm, they can eat, but they have to be gone before 11pm. And I was washing their dishes. I had worked almost a seven and a half hour shift next to a large machine that shoots hot water at you if you're not careful. I've burned my hands so many times that I'm used to it now. My manager had to come to the back to check that my area was clean and that I hadn't left any of my work unfinished. She said that I was good to go, but I didn't leave for another 10 minutes because I like my manager and wanted to talk to her for a bit. I eventually left and exited through the front door. I had just put my headphones in and was about to head to my car when I hear the most annoying voice in the world. Think Marge's voice from The Simpsons mixed with Lois's voice from Family Guy. And here comes entitled mom and her three kids around maybe five or six. I take my headphones out and look at her. Excuse me? Is this place open? I'm sorry ma'am, but we're closed for the night. Our hours are from 10.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. Entitled mom stares at me like I just spoke in another language. And then one of her kids starts to throw a tantrum, saying that he's hungry. It will only take a minute. All we want is two large pizzas, three drinks, and some ice cream. Just a minute. I'm pretty sure that the pizza will take about 20 minutes, maybe even 30 because the oven was off. I'm sorry, ma'am, but we're closed for the night. There might be a Pizza Hut still. Entitled mom cuts me off and she raises her voice. And to be honest, I wish I could unhear that voice. Listen to me, young man. I know the owner of this place and I can have you fired for denying me service here. So, let us eat. Before I can answer, my manager walks out of the restaurant and walks towards me as she wanted to say goodbye but when she got near, Entitled Mom walks towards my manager. Excuse me? He? She points to me. Told me and my kids that we could eat right now, so let us in. My manager looks at me, and I shake my head no. It was pretty late, and both me and my manager wanted to go home and get some sleep. I'm sorry, miss, but we are closed, and I know that he, points to me, couldn't start the restaurant back up this late at night for anyone. And even if we did let you in, all the food is put away and we don't want to clean the restaurant again tonight. Now, if you could please leave, we need to go home. Me and my manager turn away and leave, but Entitled Mom screams at us for being disrespectful and how lazy we are for not giving them food. I put my headphones back in so I don't have to hear her god-awful voice. I get to my car and take my headphones out and start my car. I was just about to put my car in reverse, 
My manager's car is in front of me and I didn't want to hit it. When I hear entitled mom screaming at me from her Prius that is now blocking me from leaving my parking spot, or so she thinks. The parking lot doesn't have those stumps that make sure you aren't in two parking spaces. If you're confused, I'm sorry. I don't know how to explain this very well. And the only car that is in front of me is, like I mentioned before, my manager's. She was about to get out of her car when I texted her, telling her to just drive away because I was stuck behind her and this woman didn't deserve the time of day. My manager just gives me a thumbs up and drives forward with me behind her, leaving entitled mom and her kids in the parking lot alone. I don't know what happened to them because I don't work again till Friday and I'll update this if something happens. Thanks y'all for reading this. Update. So I walked into work today and went and talked to my manager. She told me that she didn't work that day because she had the day off for her mother's birthday. Note, I posted the original on a Tuesday, and all this happening below is on Wednesday morning. But one of the waiters told her that a woman and her kids, this was Entitled Mom, were waiting outside the door for them to open. I don't know if Entitled Mom had actually stayed the night in the parking lot, or she had went home. Apparently, after Entitled Mom and her kids ate, she demanded that they get their food for free because we wasted her time and don't deserve her money as it was silly to waste it on a slob like this. After about 20 minutes of arguing, she decided that she would finally pay only when me and my manager came out and apologized to her for acting so rude. The waiter said that he couldn't do that because we both weren't working that day. The waiter knew who she was talking about because my manager told everyone to watch out for this woman. She lost her mind and said, Well then, I'm going to sit here until they arrive. The funny thing was, I didn't work till Friday. She would have had to wait two whole days for me. Needless to say, she is now banned from the restaurant, and if you're wondering if she paid, she did. Next we've got, Entitled Mom Wants to Refund Her Ice Cream After She Started to Eat It. Alright, so I work at a chocolate store in a small town that has a mall. We are also in Iowa, so we don't get too many entitled people. Alright, so like I said, I work at a chocolate store, but we do also sell ice cream there. I was with my coworker, let's call her Julia. Well, it was just me and her, and it was also a Sunday. It was slower than normal, and when that happens, we take turns with the customers. It was her turn to help someone who came in. This is where the entitled mom and her kid came in. Her kid was nice throughout the whole time they were there. Now Julia was out there helping them and before they went to the chocolate area, the mom gets one scoop of strawberry ice cream in a cake cone. She and her kid then went and got some chocolates. When it came time to pay, she got her card out and paid for it. We've got entitled mom, Julia, my coworker, me, and nice daughter. Once she paid, she looks at Julia and says, There is not enough ice cream in this scoop. Note, she had been eating it the whole time while getting the chocolates. I have only taken one leak, and this is how much is left. I want a refund. Okay, let me just get my worker out here for you, because I don't know how to do a refund. Another note, she does not really know how to do stuff with a register, so she will get me to help her out. Crimson Koopa, can you come here and help me do this? I get up and go out to see them for the first time. Hi, how can I help you guys today? Ah, yes. I don't like how little ice cream there is on this cone. I have only taken one leak off of it, and this is how much is left. I would like a refund. I look at the ice cream and know that she's lying, but I still put on a smile and get to the register to do a refund. I do the steps that I am supposed to, but the register does not work. Uh, just give me one second, ma'am. I need to go find the paper to make sure I am doing this correctly. I go to the back room to try to find the paper and could not find it. I then decide to call my manager to see if she could help me. I pick up the work phone and put in her number. It goes to voicemail, and now I just don't know what to do. I come back out to my coworker, just had enough of this entitled mom to where she says, I will just give you some of my money. What I did not realize is, while I was in the back doing that, Julia was up front saying stuff like, If you want, I could give you another scoop, and stuff like that. An entitled mom was saying stuff like, 
It's not about the product. It's about customer satisfaction. She also threw out the rest of her ice cream while I was in the back room. Like, she did not have to do that and eat the rest of it instead of throwing it out. I watch as Julia goes to the back room and gets $3 out of her purse and then comes back up and hands it to Entitled Mom. Finally, Nice Daughter says, I'm sorry about my mom. Then they both leave and Julia tells me the missing pieces to the story. She rages about it for a while, but stops after we close. My manager had also been texting her on the phone and was saying that there was no way to do a refund on the ice cream and that's why the register did nothing when I tried to give them a refund. Not the best ending, but it's one of my first interactions with an entitled person, so it was not so fun for me and my coworker. I hope you enjoyed this. And our final story of the day. I got revenge on my little brother for deleting my future. Hello, Mr. Reddit. First time posting to Reddit. I hope I do this right. Also on mobile. Cast. We've got me, Rose. We've got my adoptive mom. We've got my adoptive dad, Popsicle, dad. And we have Jerstan, jerk. So, backstory. I was taken in by a family at two weeks old with my 13-year-old birth mother. These people are now adopting me at the age of 17, so my entitled birth mother can't harm me anymore. Jerstan is also adopted, but he was adopted when he was three and I was four, about 13 years ago. Jerk has some mental issues, but none that would make him do the things that he does to me, mom and popsicle. He has broken into my bedroom multiple times and taken extremely valuable items from me. About a month before this, Jerstan was caught with a tablet and a charging cable. I knew the cable was mine, so I had taken that back, but we all had matching tablets at one point and he got his taken away. Also, I want to go to art school, possibly become an art teacher, which is why this was so detrimental to my future. The story. I was cleaning my room, going through my crystal collection to see what I could sell for some extra college money or turn into art pieces when I find my Kindle Fire case. I was excited because I had been looking for my Kindle and all the information that was on it. It had my portfolio for art school, four years worth of digital art, about three drawings per week, all my resumes for jobs, a lot of my personal pictures of my two baby sisters, and the last remaining photos of my first dog, Starla, who was my best friend since I was three up until I was 15 when she passed. I open the case and find it missing, and I knew exactly who took it. I stomp out to the kitchen where Jerk was and start interrogating him. Where's my tablet? I don't have it. BS. Give me my tablet. I've started shouting at this point, and my mom comes out. What's wrong, Rose? Jerk took my tablet. Jerk? Where the heck is her tablet? You have it. It was the tablet I was caught with. Why didn't you say it was hers? <sighs> Never mind. I was already in his room looking for more of my possessions he could have taken, which I did. My camera tripod, and a few of my valuables were hidden in his drawer. I go through and take back everything I've given to him. Books, movies, computer, everything. Mom helps me and finds some of her stuff too. During this, I ask him how much of my stuff did he delete from my tablet, and he stays silent, watching Mom and I search his room. I go to Mom's room when I'm finished and grab my tablet, putting it on the table for Mom to look through. While she's looking through it, Finding a ton of bad stuff he had put on there, Jerk piped up. I wiped the tablet completely. I look at him in shock. You what? Jerk stays quiet. Four years of drawings, resumes, papers, photos, gone? Because you wanted to watch no-no stuff? I burst out crying. My entire college plan is down the drain because of this jerk I have to call a brother. I'm done. I spend the next four hours crying my eyes out. My mom gives up her tablet to me so I don't have to touch something he was nasty on and so she can have the tablet as proof for the judge. He was already on probation for stealing a teacher's phone and my dad put a new deadbolt on my bedroom door so I don't have to be scared about jerk trying to hurt me during the night. I didn't even eat dinner because I did not want to be in the same room as him. I stared at the basement on my mom's bed crying and cuddling a bulldog until I felt better. Mom played with my hair and we watched some YouTube to help calm me down. 
the revenge. Now, I am very petty. Mess with me, I'll ruin your day. So naturally, Jerk is no exception to my pettiness. I go upstairs after my mom gets me calm. It's around 11 at night by this point. I noticed some crap my puppy left on the training pad, and I get a gross and wicked idea. I pick it up with some toilet paper and go to the bathroom with it. I turn on the sink and some Disney songs so no one can hear what I'm doing. I open up half of the cabinet. I pop open the lid to his shaving cream and I smear the dog crap all over it, grinding it in. I decided to make this an art piece, so I take his toothbrush to give it some more muddy texture. I didn't like that, so I took his hairbrush and did it again. Still not happy. I took his razors, his body wash, his washcloth, everything of his that was in the bathroom and used it to work up the art that I was making for the jerk. Nope, not enough. I pop open his shampoo and conditioner after liquefying some of it and funnel the liquid into the bottles. I rub it all over his acne face pads along with some cat urine in the container. I spit into the toothpaste. I dunk his comb into the toilet. He ruined my future, so I'm ruining the only thing he cares about, himself. I feel good at this point, sitting on the counter typing this. I'll update when I get his reactions. Edit. So mom and popsicle made me clean up the crap in the shaving cream can, but jerk still hasn't noticed any of it. He hasn't brushed his hair, teeth, washed his face, nothing. He's so disgusting. But some good news. Mom and I got to speak to the parole officer today. He broke parole in five different ways. One, he took my tablet. Two, he took my charger. Three, he erased everything from my tablet. Destruction of property. Four, he watched bad stuff against house rules. And five, threatened to put me in the hospital. He's getting some jail time by next Wednesday. Thank God. And shoutouts to our re-generals of the day. The Old Fat Boy, Ishan Tube Gaming, Israel, and American Devil. Become tomorrow's re-generals by leaving as many re's as you can in the comments below. And watch this video next. You will love it.